If you are using Angular, probably you are familiar with NGRX, but not a lot of people know about component store inside NGRX, which allows us to isolate Redux inside a component. As you can see here, I opened the official website in GRX, and here is the additional library component store, which actually means typically we are using in GRX store, maybe with effects or router, but here we are using component store. And this is important to remember, you can use it as an additional library or without in GRX store at all. What is the difference? NGRX store is just a Redux, which means it is completely global state, and you are dispatching actions to this global state, which is situated outside of Angular. Then the values from that state is just synchronized with all components, where we have subscriptions for them. Component store is working in a completely different way. We are trying to organize our code in the Redux way, but just inside a single component. So it is not global at all, it is inside a component, it is binded to this component, which means everything will be destroyed when our component is destroyed. Which actually means component store is the idea to organize your component in an NGRX way. And first of all, we must install here an additional package, NGRX component store. So here I can write npm install, NGRX component store, and I'm good to go. Here I already have an NGRX application. So we see here a list of posts, and we can create here a new post. Most importantly, it is not just Angular, you can see here in Redux DevTools, we see actions for get posts, get post success, create post, create post success, and here on the right we have our state with posts. And actually we are even doing this API calls through effects to our API to fetch real data. And here how it looks like, here is our markup, we have our observables for is loading error and the list of posts, and here is our form to add a new post. Inside our post component we are reading values through selectors from our NGRX store, and we are dispatching actions to get the list of posts or to create a new post. And additionally to that, inside our store we have not only actions, but also reducers where we are changing state. Now our idea to move the whole logic of NGRX inside NGRX component store. And actually you have two possible variants. First of all, you can just write the whole logic with component store inside the component directly. But this is not a recommended approach. The recommended approach is to leave your component as a view layer of your component, which means we are writing the whole business logic in additional component, and inside our post component we just render our view. This is why here I want to create posts.store.ts. And here I want to export our class, which will be post store. And here I want to extend component store. And this component store, as you can see, is coming exactly from this additional package. What we want to provide inside is the state that we will have inside our component. And actually our state previously was is loading, error, and the list of our posts. This is exactly what I want to have here. Let's create here posts component state. Now on the top we must add here injectable and create here this interface. This is why here export interface, post component state, and here first of all we have is loading, it is a boolean, we also have an error, it is either string or null, and we have our list of posts, which is a post interface array. Now inside our component we want to initialize our state, so it will be available from the beginning. This is why here we are using constructor, and inside we must call super, as you can see we are getting an error regarding it. This is why here we are calling super, and we are providing inside the object with our initial state. Is loading will be false, error will be null, and posts will be an empty array. So we created our state, now the question is how we can read values from our state. And we can do it in exactly the same way like inside in GRX. So here let's create an observable is loading, and we are using here this dot select. And this method will allow us to select something from component state. This is why here we are getting access to our state, and we can read here state dot is loading. 
In exactly the same way, we can get here error with dollar, and here we're reading state dot error, and the last one here is the list of polls, which is state dot polls. We could leave it like this and just use inside our component and post store dot is loading error post. This is totally fine, but the recommended way is to create a public observable for all these properties, which we can use as a combination, which actually means we want to make everything here private so they won't be available for our component, but additionally we want to create here a property which is called VM or view model, also with dollar, and here we are writing this select and we are providing inside the object with all our observables. In our case it will be is loading, which is is loading with dollar, then we have our error, which is our error with dollar, and the last one is the list of posts, which is our posts with dollar. In this case here we just open for our component VM property and nothing more. How it will work? Let's jump back inside our post component and here what we want to do, we want to inject inside the constructor our post store. And this is post store. Now here on the top we want to create a new property VM with dollar and we just assign here this dot post store dot vm with dollar. Now we can jump inside our html and wrap the whole page with ng container. And what we want to write here is ng if and an async call to our vm. And here we are using svm, which actually means this whole code will have access to vm, which is just an object with property is loading, error and our post. This is why here instead of our code we can just write here vm dot is loading, then vm dot error, and then we are rendering inside vm dot error, and here instead of post async, vm dot post. And as you can see, our code is much cleaner with this approach because everything is grouped inside a single object. As you can see in browser, we are getting an error that post store provider is not registered. But in our case now we don't want to register it inside module, we want to register it directly inside our component because it is tied to this component. This is why here providers and we are providing inside our post store that we just created. As you can see we don't have any errors and now actually everything is working. Obviously everything is empty because we didn't fetch any posts yet. In order to do that, first of all we must inject our post service inside our constructor inside post store. So here will be private post service and this is our post service. Now here I want to write effects to fetch our data from the API just directly inside our store without creating an additional effects service like we did inside plain ngrx. And in order to do that we can write for example get posts. And here we are using this dot effect, and here we are getting trigger with dollar as a first argument. So what we want to return here is trigger pipe. And first of all, when we start to fetch our post, we want to set is loading to true. This is why inside pipe I will use a tab function. And inside tab function we can just provide something that we want to do. In our case, we can write this dot set state. And as you can see, this is a function to completely override a state. We could just set here some state that we want to update, but all our properties will be removed. This is not what we typically want. We want partial update and for this we have patch state. In this case here we can just provide an object with is loading true for example. In this case just when our effect is started we will update our state. But actually there is one more variant which I prefer because in this case we are writing everything in a single way. And this is the usage of updater. What I want to do here on the top, I want to create something like set is loading, which will be a function. And here I just want to assign this updater. And this is a function that we are getting also from component store. And here we have access to our current state. And here we want to return change state. This is why here I am just taking our state and I am setting is loading to true. Which means set is loading now is just a function which will update our state by using our updater. 
This is why here now instead of patch state, we can just write this dot set is loading. Now after our tab, we can write exhaust map to make our API call. So what we want to return here is our this post service. Here we have our get post and we want to make a pipe. And inside our pipe we can use a function tap response. This is exactly a function also from component store to make success and failure correctly. So here inside success we will get our post and we want to add this post to the list. And I will do it through the function that we will create in a second. This is this dot add posts function and I'm providing posts inside. And inside our error function we will get an error which is an HTTP error response. And here I want to call this dot set error and I'm providing an error inside. So this code is super similar to NGRX effects, but we just need to create the function with update. So first of all here I will copy paste set is loading completely because I want to write instead set error. And here we are getting not only state, but as a second argument we are getting our error. And this is HTTP error response. And now here we want to set is loading back to false, but additionally error, which will be error.message. And in the same way we can copy paste set error and create set post to update the list of posts. So as a second argument here we are getting our post and this is post interface array. Now here we are setting is loading to false, this is completely fine and we want to update our post list with posts that we just got. But actually our method was not set post but add post. And as you can see we are not getting any errors. Now the only thing that we need to do, we need to dispatch this action get post. This is why here let's jump back inside our post component and here inside our ngOnInit we don't need this old code of ngRigs, we are just writing this dot post store dot and we have get post function and we don't need to provide anything inside. Now let's reload the page and as you can see voila, we got our posts and actually this is an API call, we can see it here in the network. In exactly the same way we can add creation of the post. Let's jump inside our post store and I will copy this get post completely because it will be super similar. So here we will have create post and inside of this effect we won't get a trigger but we will get the information about a post as an observable. This is why here I will write post with dollar and we can write that this is an observable of the object with title string. This is exactly what we are getting from our form. Now instead of trigger we can write here post with dollar. We are setting here is loading, this is completely fine, but instead of get post we want to call here create post and inside we must provide the post and we have it inside our exhaust map. Now here when our post was created we are getting back our post and we want to create a function at post where inside we will provide our post and set error function we already have. Now here on the top let's copy paste at post function and change it to at post. And we know that here we will get just a single post of type post interface and here we want not to override the whole list of posts but just to merge it correctly. This is why here I am spreading state post and I am adding this new post at the end. So our effect is completely ready, we can jump inside our component and call instead of this to dispatch this dot post store dot and here will be create post and we are providing inside just this dot at form dot get row value like we did previously. Let's check this out, I will type here qqq I'm hitting enter and we have this new post here on the bottom through our component store. Now we just need to clean our component. We're removing here dispatch and dispatch of get post. We don't need these selectors from our store and we don't need store at all from ngRX as well as these observables. As you can see our component is now exactly the view layer because it is super easy to understand. And the whole business logic is inside our post store. And actually if you want to learn how to use ngRx and how to build post module completely with ngRx, make sure to check this video also.